take off. Yes, okay, okay, okay. So welcome once again. Buongiorno, buongiorno, and guten morgen to everybody. And then there we are. We continue with what we have been doing. Uh, in a couple of minutes, let me recap. Uh, let me recap very briefly what we were talking for a uh, for a continuity. Okay. So <coughs> you see, we consider the Fourier uh, Lagrangian this was minus p by two and x mu. So this was the conformally gauge fixed Fourier curve. Now let me put Lagrangian because I have written that Lagrangian. If you want to write the x and is and you integrate over sigma. So uh, this is what we obtain after the gauge fixing, after the conformal gauge fixing, where you, you assume as alpha beta to be proportional to the alpha beta or h alpha beta proportional to g alpha beta. Correct? And we put the proportionality constant to be equal to y. <coughs> And now we have seen the. Uh, we also need to know uh, in the first place. Yes. So uh, what we were doing with this action, we use the variational principle, and we derived the equation of motion x nu. This equals to zero. This is del alpha del alpha. The del number sin, and <coughs> so you could write it either in the x prime square and d uh, two sigma, and here you write down this equation of motion x equal to 0 this implies equals to 0 or you write it down the uh, Lagrangian that would be minus p by 2 and this is L plus x mu. Well, uh, well, let me let me just with the last results. So this is minus t by two into minus two into minus two into del plus x mu del minus x. Mu. Okay. So we can write it down in terms of the light from coordinates. So this is the this is the action. For that, let me briefly or let, let me briefly uh, briefly write down sigma plus minus is tau plus minus sigma and so Tau is uh, one half sigma plus plus sigma minus and sigma is one half sigma plus <coughs> minus sigma minus and then plus minus then plus is then sigma plus. is one half L tau plus L sigma and the minus is this is one half so back and forth whenever we like whenever we like we can go from instant point to light point and so on and
So we, we, we need to remember that x plus is minus 2 x minus and del plus minus is minus 2 del minus plus okay. and here theta alpha beta is minus 1 half is minus 1 half 0 and this is 0 minus 2 minus minus 2 so the, <coughs> the metric in the like front coordinates now what we did last time we considered the the accent conformally gauged for your post accent and we varied and we obtained this part and we obtained the boundary terms which were of the type x mu x prime that we proceed so this is what we did last time and so what we want is we are interested only in retaining this so that our xm of the theory remains Lorentz invariant a Lorentz scalar and for that these things they must be identically zero they of course do not vanish on their own because these boundary conditions are on the spatial dimension sigma whatever boundary terms we had plus we had some boundary terms they were on the time boundaries and these terms they vanish on their own because here delta x mu on time boundaries is identically zero at uh, minus and plus infinity at the time boundary just like field theory in field theory all the fields are supposed to vanish at the infinite space time boundaries so these terms vanish they drop out they don't drop out on their own so we go to we make two choices delta x mu equal to 0 or x mu dot equal to 0 this is one and the same thing because they the boundaries remain fixed with time anywhere the string can fluctuate okay but this n n remains fixed okay so we call them the original boundary conditions in the other case uh, x prime equal to they are the ones that so uh, the end point at x mu x mu x mu at sigma equal to 0 at sigma equal to 5 the ends of the string can fluctuate okay they need not remain at the same point in addition to this they can fluctuate as well but the end points are no longer fixed so x prime mu equal to 0 and these we called as Neumann boundary conditions of course we can have Neumann Neumann at both ends Dirichlet, Dirichlet at both ends or the mixed boundary conditions N D D N. Okay, but we have to watch out for them because as we will see today, uh, today's lecture is basically a recap of some of the very important issues that are involved in the uh, in the so-called solution of this uh, field equation. We would solve it in the right front coordinates. We would split it into two parts the left moving and right moving parts we would expand them into the Fourier modes and then we will make use of uh, these boundary conditions and so on to study these Fourier modes and express then everything in terms of the Fourier modes right and eventually derive the mass spectrum of the theory now in the next lecture so far, until today's, we are not going to consider compactification of any extra dimensions in the theory. But in the next lecture, we would explicitly consider compactification of one of the dimensions, special dimensions. We will consider x25 
and compactify it along a circle. Okay, so curvature line kind of idea, curvature line theory is kind of idea. And in that case, comparative to today, what you will see that the mass spectrum would change when we convectify one of the dimensions or all of the extra dimensions. Our theory is uh, extra dimensions in bosonic, it's 26. So 26 minus 4 are the extra dimensions. In, in fermionic in the super string theory, 10 is the number of dimensions. So 10 minus 4, we live in the four dimensional world. So six dimensions are uh, extra dimensions. <coughs> and we would take an explicit example of one particular dimension and convectify it then see. So relatively we would see what happens here in the present case and what happens when we convectify a particular dimension. Okay. And then in the remaining lectures again we would study the things comparative to this. So here what is happening this x mu is bosonic x mu is bosonic. So here the Fourier modes, uh, the coefficients of these exponential terms, okay, the, or the annihilation creation operators involved in the expansion of x mu, they would be bosonic and they would obey both Einstein statistics and the corresponding commutation relations. However, when you write down the super string theory, then Again, you would have some equation of motion and 